7-4, we will now have a presentation by Brinkley Sergeant Wigginton Architects and Councilman Hunsaker on the City of Granbury Aqua Aquatic, Aqua Aquatic Facility Audit and Feasibility Study. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, I would like to turn it over to, this is uh, George Dinas and Stephen Springs. Uh, uh, they know more about aquatic facilities than I than I ever wish to know. Um, they'll go through this uh, with you, and you can ask them some questions, and I'd be glad to answer any questions about our existing uh, pool, if you have any afterwards. All right, good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Uh, it's good to be here uh, tonight. My name is George Dinas with Councilman Hunsaker, and we do aquatic facility uh, planning and design and so we're working with uh, Stephen uh, Springs and Dwayne Brinkley with Brinkley Sergeant Wigginton Architects uh, looking at uh, the existing condition as well as uh, possible future options for the swimming pool and so with that we should have a presentation uh, that we'll pull up here in just a second Does, there we go uh, and so uh, as someone who grew up uh, within the area, uh, I was actually uh, coaching summer swim team in the city of Denton from 1997 to 1999 and actually got to bring my team down here to swim at this pool um, probably the summer of, I think it was the summer of 1998 or 1999, which is right after it, it opened. The construction drawings are dated uh, late, late 1990s. Uh, and I actually saw Dana Vollmer uh, swim in this pool, so it was <clears throat> a nice little... Uh, fun note. And so what we've done uh, with our uh, assessment here is we have looked at the need for aquatics within the city of Granbury and the surrounding communities. We've looked at uh, some program elements to uh, support that need. And then we've also looked at the uh, cost implications of that, both on the capital as well as the operational side. And so you know, here are some pictures of the exista, existing dana Volmer Municipal Swing Pool uh, you can see there in the top middle, there are some issues with, uh, you know, cracking in the, the pool surface. Uh, there's some issues with, uh, you know, the deck, you know, heaving and settling a little bit. Uh, the middle uh, bottom picture there is the existing uh, children's pool. Uh, and then the water slide there uh, on the bottom right. And then also the mechanical equipment. You can see the, the pictures of the deck in the bottom left. You have the mechanical room, uh, some corrosion there in the top right, as well as uh, the existing support building uh, there in the bottom middle picture. That's actually uh, right down the middle of that picture. There's a, a pretty large crack within the support building that you can actually see through uh, the building, uh, but just because of the, the age and condition of the, the support building. And so, uh, our firm typically assigns outdoor swimming pools to have a lifespan in the neighborhood of 25 to 30 years. And so uh, this pool actually falls right within this window where we would see it's time for some type of renovation uh, or uh, an eventual replacement. Some of the things that we consider when we look at renovation versus replacement, we look at the physical side of things, which is the documenting, documenting of the conditions that I just uh, notated, but then we also look at the functional side, and that typically will ask the question: Does this pool meet the needs of, you know, the aquatic users within the community? And what we find and know from uh, national statistics is that 92% uh, of people qualify themselves as recreational swimmers, and the main place that people uh, are introduced to swimming is through outdoor aquatic facilities. And so uh, on the functional side, you know, attendance has been declining in recent years, not just because of the, the pandemic has obviously uh, hurt that a little bit, but then uh, just in, in general, as other facilities have newer and updated facilities. Uh, and specifically with the bathhouse components, you know, this pool was built right before uh, Stevens firm and our firm started uh, teaming together in the late 90s, early 2000s, and uh, doing more modern municipal family aquatic centers, uh, like in uh, Cleburne Splash Station is an example of that. If you would go to that facility and compare it to this facility, it, it was only built a few years later, 
uh, but the bathhouse is different. It had it had family changing rooms. Uh, it had a lap pool, plus it had a recreational pool. And so those are some of the things that we, we look at. Uh, so with the existing condition, physical condition uh, of the pool, you know, we looked at, uh, just to bring it up to, you know, a newer version of, of what it once was, you know, looking at pool deck, replacement gutter, piping, uh, new filtrations, resurface the pool, uh, put in a new water slide. Uh, we had that, you know, right about $1.2 million uh, in repairs. Again, that would not do anything with the existing uh, pool layout or pool functionality. Everything uh, would remain the same. Uh, so that's an, an uh, assessment of the existing conditions of the pool. Uh, throughout this process, we also reached out to the community. Uh, so we launched a community survey uh, early this year. We got over 200 uh, responses. Uh, almost half of the responders uh, had uh, children under the age of 18. Uh, the majority were residents of Granbury. And really what we found through the community survey, it wasn't statistically valid, but uh, Aaron and his team pushed it out through various channels uh, within the city, and, and we really found support for uh, recreational aquatics, for water fitness classes, uh, for swim lessons, and we, we found that the majority of folks, uh, you know, some came to the existing swimming pool, others went to, you know, Stephenville or Cleburne uh, or the Hood County YMCA uh, for uh, their aquatic offerings. Uh, and this is just an example of one of the questions and the responses that we got that shows the different uh, features that we asked about. You know, would you prefer uh, a zero depth entry, water slides, children's areas, lap lanes, and uh, other uh, options like that. We also had an open-ended comment section on the survey where we found, uh, you know, uh, that the community respondents, you know, thought that it was important to uh, continue to offer a municipal swimming pool here in Granbury. Uh, we had some responses notating the fact that the YMCA has the indoor competition pool, and that's where the, the Granbury swim team uh, currently swims, and so that this facility could be more recreational uh, focused. And then we heard, you know, there's important, uh, important features that should be included, such as, you know, ADA accessibility, um, you know, newer updated uh, bathhouse and, and more shaded uh, areas. Uh, we also had a community input meeting uh, over at the conference center uh, where we had uh, our slideshow running on two different screens. We had some presentation boards as well, uh, comment cards, and we found that in general, you know, there was a support for more family amenities, support for that zero depth entry and children's pool, uh, and then again, we heard the, the reiteration that we should include uh, lots of shade uh, within the facility. And so uh, once we looked at the existing condition of the pool, we came up with that you know, $1.2 million to bring it up to a, a newer version of itself. We also started to look at a couple of different options, and we placed these on the uh, existing site of where the pool is, mainly for size and scale, so you could uh, see how big the options that we're showing are compared to the existing uh, pool. And so uh, option one, uh, we looked at about a 5,000 uh, square foot leisure pool, uh, plus a separate 1,800 square foot children's pool. And so uh, this has a uh, zero depth entry there in the uh, main pool with a family slide. It's got a couple of uh, newer updated water slides. It's got a uh, children's crossing activity, which I'll have a picture of here uh, in a minute. And then it also has a designated uh, children's pool. The children's pool uh, that's at the current facility, uh, you know, d it doesn't really meet the needs of, of many children outside of, of maybe a nine-month-old that can just sit in the pool. And so uh, the children's features that we, we do now you know, they have, they have play features, they have sprays, they have interactivity. And so, you know, we want to include both passive and active water in any facility that we do. But what we really find is that, that children uh, really like to have those active, uh, active sprays and, and interactive elements within aquatic facilities. Uh, this would also include uh, a new support building, uh, most likely similar size to the one that you all uh, have now. Uh, and, but some issues with the current site placement 
are uh, obviously, you know, parking could be an issue with a newer facility as well as the proximity uh, to the uh, baseball softball field uh, just there uh, to the north. And actually on the day of our site visit, there was a couple of baseballs and softballs that were within the pool uh, fenced area. And so uh, maybe, you know, providing some better separation uh, from those if the, the site were to be moved. Uh, we have uh, looked at estimated cost for a facility like this right now. Uh, we're seeing construction cost uh, fairly volatile within the aquatic industry as, as it is with the industries as a whole. Uh, but when we priced these, uh, the first part of this year it was about five point, uh, about five and a half million in construction and just under seven and a half million for the overall project cost where we uh, include project design fees. Uh, we include escalation as well as contingencies. And some example images of what that could look like. Uh, you know, you have the interactive children's amenity there on the right. You have a, a zero depth entry with a family slide and shade uh, on the left. Uh, the children's floatable uh, crossing activity, uh, a new and updated water slide tower. And uh, the other thing that we considered is that that first option did not include lap lanes, and, and this pool has always included lap lanes. And so we wanted to show an option that was somewhat similar, uh, but it included the ability to expand into some lap lanes. And so that's the primary difference between option one and option two. Uh, we included those three lap lanes there in the top, and so that provides a designated uh, you know, fitness swim area, programming area. You could do shallow uh, as well as deep water aerobics, uh, swim lessons. And so we wanted to make sure that we, we included some lap lanes in, in at least one of the options. We also moved the children's play feature into the zero depth entry, uh, but we still included a separate uh, children's pool uh, there to the bottom right of the facility. Uh, as we started to look at uh, cost on this one, we came to uh, right about $7 million for construction and about $9 million for the overall uh, project cost. Uh, one of the things that uh, our firm has uh, said for years is that really, you know, the, the basic outdoor family aquatic center, uh, you know, you can get an outdoor pool for, you know, 5 to $6 million. And unfortunately here within the past couple of years, that, that cost has increased and so now we're seeing that you know really if, if you're going to do an outdoor family aquatic center that you're probably going to start at six million at a minimum and it's going to be in that range of you know six to nine upwards of uh, ten million dollars depending on the number of pools the number of features and uh, things like that the one thing that we did not want to do was to lower it was to go smaller than what you currently have uh, but also to make it more uh, interactive and, and more usable uh, you know, having more shallow water means you have a higher capacity. Uh, you know, once you start to, to get into deep water, it, it lowers your capacity. And so we want to make sure that we had a higher capacity and a lot of different uh, elements within the pool so that people can, can progress through the facility as they age. So we not only have areas for ages two to four, but then they can go, you know, to the main pool by the time that they're three to six years old. At that time, they, they hit that 48 inch height requirement for the water slides and they can get on the water slides and then they can go to the deep water. And so we, want, we wanted to have a facility that was multi-purpose, multi-use, multi-generational and provides children the ability to really grow up uh, within the facility. And then hopefully by the time they're, they're 16, they come and work at the facility uh, and, and have a good time. And so uh, a couple of example images uh, here, you know, there's a, a lap pool on the right. Uh, there is the West Irving Aquatic Center that uh, we designed with Stevens Firm uh, a few years ago that has a, a zero depth entry with a play structure and water slides. Uh, and again, just some other example uh, elements of, you know, water slides and uh, children's play uh, features, uh, as well as that uh, updated designated uh, children's pool and then that, that crossing activity. Uh, one of the things we want to make sure to do is, again, I mentioned passive and active spaces, and that crossing activity is just a great active uh, space uh, that provides challenge and, and agility and skill to get across those floatable pads without uh, falling, falling into the water, and so it's great to, to keep kids active and moving uh, while they're at the pool. Uh, and then lastly, we looked at an option when the, the results from the community survey came back. One of the highest uh, requested uh, features was to incorporate a, a lazy river into the facility. And so uh, we took another look at the, the different facility features. 
Uh, we wanted to keep the zero depth entry in the water slides because those obviously had uh, high uh, survey responses uh, geared toward those as well, but we wanted to look at that uh, lazy river, and so this one has a lazy uh, river component. Uh, and so, you know, this one came in at about 8.4 million for a total project cost. And again, size and scale, it, it fits within the confines of the existing facility. Uh, but as you can see, it, it's it's pretty tight. And so, uh, but we at least wanted to show, you know, how that, how that would fit within the existing uh, site. And so a couple of example images, there's, you know, another children's play area along with a, a lazy river as well as, you know, that could incorporate some uh, water volleyball or, uh, you know, another example of a water slide tower. And so there's the three options uh, all next to each other, just so you can see how they fit uh, on the site in comparison to one another. Obviously, option two uh, was the largest as, as well as the, uh, had the highest capital cost uh, for the three separate options. Uh, the other thing that we looked at was uh, a couple of different site options, knowing that, you know, there is a, a change within uh, Granberry with, with the growth rate, the number of people moving specifically to the north side, uh, up 377. And so we looked in, we pulled the demographics for uh, the existing location uh, within about a 30 minute drive time, which is what we see is, is about typical for outdoor uh, aquatics in the summertime. And uh, we found that the north side of town, uh, it actually over doubles the number of people, just population density within uh, 30 minutes. And that's primarily because you're, you know, you're pulling from that southwest side of uh, Fort Worth and, and the Benbrook area, uh, as well as the, the income was, was fairly stable, but the income uh, within that region was definitely uh, higher than the uh, national average, which is about fifty fifty three thousand dollars uh, per household. Uh, right now. And so uh, we also pulled um, the demographics for age distribution. And so uh, the top right box there shows the uh, age distribution, you know, anything that is below the, the blue line or the, hold on, my, my eyesight is not as good as it, as it once was. So yeah, so Granberry is the red line, the blue line is the national average. And so uh, anywhere that the red line is below the blue line is where Granberry is below or above uh, the national average. So a little bit of a, of a higher uh, aging population, uh, but you can see the growth rate there, you know, for the 30 mile radius as well as for uh, the city itself is, is fairly high. And so that's where uh, we feel that, you know, you don't want to just go back with the same size facility, but that you want to plan for some future growth uh, within the options. Uh, that we showed. And then I mentioned the other area of facilities from Stephenville uh, to Cleburne to the Hood County uh, YMCA. You know, you have a, a water park up in uh, White Settlement. You have uh, Burleson has an aquatic center. And so you're really in a, in a nice little spot where there, there's not a whole lot of competition. You know, anybody is going to have to drive to these different uh, facilities. And so we feel that, you know, based on those different sites, that there could be uh, some differences within the number of people that attend if you go with the existing location or if you go with an, uh, you know, a site on the north side uh, of the city. And so that's where uh, our operational analysis comes into play. So we have not only the construction costs, the project costs, but the capacity uh, for each of those various options. Uh, we have projections on attendance you know, in that, you know, 35 to 40,000 uh, person range per summer. Uh, and a cost recovery, you know, in that 60 to 70% range, I would say that that's fairly common for outdoor aquatics within this area. One of the main things that we heard on the community survey and the open-ended comments was that uh, we want the facility to remain affordable uh, to residents of Granbury. And so, uh, you know, making sure that it's priced appropriately uh, so that, you know, maybe you have a resident versus non-resident rate, uh, but making sure that it is affordable to residents, uh, as they said, uh, within the survey. And so, uh, you know, I think the two key things to highlight again is that the site can, can and will play an, an issue with that, specifically if you're looking to draw people from that southwest Fort Worth uh, area, uh, because that, that additional, you know, 10 minutes to get from the north side to the existing pool location uh, can 
you know, make a break, uh, a 30 minute drive time into a 40 minute drive time or, or 25 into 35. Uh, and then the other thing to mention is just the, as I mentioned earlier, the, the capital cost are fluctuating. Uh, and so, um, you know, we've priced those out in, uh, you know, early 2022 dollars, but we've also seen that those have increased uh, a little bit since that time. So uh, with that, that is a, a quick snapshot into the work that our firms have done here in the past uh, couple of months. So, you know, our goal is to provide you uh, good, solid information so that you can make, you know, sound decisions about the future of the swimming pool. And so with that, uh, would welcome any uh, questions for myself uh, or for Aaron at this time. Ms. Reiner. Mr. Mayor, thank you for the presentation. I appreciate that. Sure. My uh, girls grew up doing competition swim right here in Granbury and for Granbury High School in the Seals. So I am a swim mom. Okay, great. <laughs> um, I do have some questions, so bear with me. I saw a lot of projections, but what I didn't see, I, based on your numbers, do you have a projected start date? I know this is just a presentation, but you have to base these numbers off of something. And as volatile as you say the market is right now, what's the projected start date if we were to base construction on these numbers? So those would be in, in today's dollars, but we have also included one year of escalation uh, within those numbers. And so that would, that would get us until, you know, essentially one year from today uh, with those, or one year from early. So early 2023 would have been the projected start date when those uh, numbers were developed. The one thing that we do see with aquatic facility development is that you need about six, six to eight months for design and then another uh, you know, nine to nine to 11 months for construction. And so, you know, we would see that the earliest that a new facility could open uh, in Granbury would be for that 2024 uh, summer season if funding was acquired, a design team was hired, and then design started uh, pretty quickly. Okay. And then uh, this is, this might actually be a question for Tammy. I think she's in the audience. The, um, the projections on cost recovery, does that include tourism dollars at all? If it were to be on the, the, you know, the Fort Worth side of town, we probably would bring in a different crowd. Does that include those projections? And I apologize if that was in there and I just missed it, but. That is correct. Within our, within our numbers, we could refine it a little bit for, to be more site specific. Right now we've taken a more general, generalized approach, but uh, yeah, we've definitely accounted that, yeah, you would have some folks driving from that 30 minute radius outside of Granbury. Okay, so we've got Granbury and outside of Granbury. Correct. And um, this is probably a Chris question. What are we looking at funding this with? It's all it takes is money, right? All it takes is money. And uh, <laughs> the last legislative session required that if you uh, want to take on debt to build recreation facilities, it's got to go to the voters. So you would need to put this on the ballot in November. So that's a whole nother conversation with our financial advisor. That was all I had. I think you answered okay. the other question I had. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Mr. Wiley. Mr. Thank you. Um, if you go with one of these options or something like that, where you're totally replacing the pool, is there really any significant difference in cost doing the current location versus another location? So it, that, I think that's dependent upon the location. Obviously now, you know, at, at the, well, you would have demolition uh, either way uh, because you would have to demo the existing pool. You know, if you re rebuild there, if you rebuild it somewhere else, you'd still have to, you know, demol demolish the existing facility and then repurpose that. Uh, the thing with a new site is that, uh, you know, you would have, uh, you know, site construction costs such as, you know, utilities, parking and, and all of that and so I think it would probably take a little bit more of a, a detailed study but we could we could see it it being fairly close on on both just because there's complexities involved with you know demolition of the existing facility rebuild additional parking uh, or looking at a new site where you're starting clean and you know have to bring utilities to the site landscaping parking and all of those issues that come up thank you Yes, and, and land cost as well if the, you know, if you look at a parcel of land that the city does not currently own. So these, uh, the numbers that you have do not include land cost? They do not include land acquisition at this time. L land acquisition or um, scraping the ground or preparing it? We have uh, included uh, a demolition allowance as well as site construction cost within our figures. Okay. Yes, sir. Did you include parking? Yes, that's correct. Parking is included as well. 
I'll let everybody ask questions, and I got some closing ones. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vail, uh, great presentation. Uh, love all the designs. Um, I'd like to have one in my backyard. <laughs> Option um, two. I was thinking about, you mentioned the Y, obviously we've got a really nice YMCA. Um, we obviously got a city beach and a little splash zone area there that has been full really the last couple of weeks. Um, when I looked at the page on all the renovations, um, are those our immediate needs? I mean, it, it, I guess my question is, is the pool functional and safely operational as it is today? And will that get us through the season? Correct, yes. Kind of thinking we, about what our immediate needs are. Correct. And in terms of immediate life safety needs, uh, we did not find any of those within our assessment. Uh, but it was more, you know, if the pool continues in operation, these areas are going to sure. need to be addressed. Understand. So the water slide um, replacement cost, is that what that is? That's in there, the $150,000? Correct, yes. Okay. And underwater lights, 15,000, is that rewiring a lot of things? I mean, that just seemed high to me. Yeah, yeah okay. that was replacing the, the underwater uh, lights. There was a couple that were uh, not functioning, as well as there was some rewiring that would need to be done as well. That's okay. That's important in a pool, obviously. Yes. So, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Yes. Other questions, Mr. Kaufman? I'd just like to add that currently we're not running the lights because it's not safe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We've got them disconnected. I have some uh, questions on the numbers. The, uh, the site options, uh, and I'm probably just not understanding this, but uh, site one population and then the income, 6731. And then I'm looking at the next uh, pages where you talk about um, the expense budget and projected revenues of, you know, 298 and, uh, the, or the expense budget, 298, the revenue projection of 205, a $93,000 loss for option one. Option two is a 99,000. Option three is 127,000. I was just trying to compare that back to the uh, the numbers, the sixty, the sixty six and the sixty eight, which I couldn't understand. We doubled the population. We doubled the uh, is that usage or is that just population? That's just population. Uh, okay. Yes, and so depending upon if the the pools on uh, at the existing location or on the north side, uh -huh. you know, you just have you you shift right. that thirty minute drive time from central Granbury to northern Granbury. And so you have a wider, uh, you cast a wider net of folks that are within 30 minutes of the pool to, to draw from. Uh, I, I still, you know, think that the majority of folks would, uh, of the attendants would come, you know, within probably a 15 to 20 minute uh, drive time. But, you know, shifting it north, you're gonna definitely pull some of those that are closer to 30 minutes away. And there's more, more people in that, in that direction. And so you're assuming that uh, option one, two, and three, even though you showed them that could be built over here, what is, are you basing this on the 150,000 population or the, po yeah, the 150,000 population or the 72,000 population? So we, we actually based it uh, more so on the 150 than on the, the 70. So we would probably see that if it was, we would see a little bit lower cost recovery rate and lower attendance if it was built at the existing site as opposed to the... Uh, north side location okay and if these numbers uh, hold it would be about half the attendance 72,000 versus 154 well we, we actually don't see a direct correlation between right. density and, and attendance uh, you know we're we're still gonna have because because a lot of those people are coming you know within a, a 20 15 to 20 minute drive mm -hmm. time instead of a 30 minute drive time and so the farther out that we go, the, the less percentage of people we draw. So we still draw the majority of people from within 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, mm -hmm. But then we might only draw, you know, a half percent or X number of percentage from that 30 minute uh, drive time. So we still feel that, you know, this facility would, would probably have 25 to 30,000 in attendance if it was at the existing site. But then moving it uh, to the north side, you know, you can draw that extra 10,000 people. 
Well, Mr. Kaufman has challenged me to find anybody anywhere that makes money on a pool, and uh, I'm not going to take him up on that challenge, <laughs> but I would like to. A municipal pool. A municipal pool. But I would like to have, you know, would need some pretty good, we would need to be able to set clear expectations on what, what this would cost us, both from a construction standpoint and from an ongoing basis. So, correct. appreciate the effort I, yes. and, and appreciate the information as well. Thank you. Yes, sir. I'm, I'm Stephen with Brinkley Sergeant Wigginton. And to kind of layer on top of that, I think it's important to know that this first blush at these options, these are all 30,000 foot options. So much like George mentioned um, on the on the cost side, and, and to your question, um, sorry, I can't read that far. <laughs> but um, you ask, you know, what is, it, what is this projecting to? When are we starting? Well, the, the short answer is we don't know. And so it's hard for us to project cost because right now the crystal ball is as fuzzy as it's ever been. The best we can do is say, this is what we think it is now. And likewise with um, this performance, the sort of financial performance of the facility, we would recommend not only would the construction costs kind of get reevaluated and updated once, once there's more clarity and timeline, but once there's clarity in site location, it would make sense and scope to kind of update this number and get to get more detail, like what I think you're grasping for, and we can't quite answer it yet, right. is those are the big directions that we feel like as a consultant that we need input from is, is time, is scope, is location. Then we can start fine tuning both the budget and the performa numbers. Um, but anything you get from any contractor today is gonna be qualified with a big fat asterisk on pricing. I mean, we all see it in the news every night, right, about inflation. Well, and the reality is construction costs don't follow the consumer price index. They're usually more substantial than the consumer price index. So let that sink in for a minute. You know, right. time is literally money, you know, right now. So I don't want to scare you guys, but I think it's important that you have your eyes wide open as to what our confidence level is in what we're presenting and mm -hmm. what what we can hear from you guys that will help us fine tune that as, as best as possible going forward. Um, so for example, if you were gonna target a November bond versus say May of 23 or November 23 or whatever, there's gonna be a time value cost of money in each of those scenarios. Um, so it's scope, time and money like every project. It's just, it's just magnified these days. So I hope that helps you in, in your deliberations. Well, we certainly did not invite you here to waste your time. We have a, <laughs> we have a great, we, this is an interest in our community. It's an interest at, the, at this level as well. Yes, sir. So I've got a couple of questions. Um, in your f existing facility audit, um, I just want to dot a few I's across a few T's. Is the pool ADA compliant currently? Yeah, so is with the ADA uh, compliance, so if the pool is uh, less than 300 perimeter uh, feet, then it would need one means of accessible entry. If it is greater than that, it would need uh, two means. And so with the ADA compliant lift that is in place, uh, it is ADA compliant. For the, okay, so we have one lift and that's all we need. Uh, I believe so. I have to check back on the, okay. the exact perimeter. I have that uh, in a report that I, okay. I've written, so I can, I can double check that just to make sure. So another question I have to do with the audit is, does the existing pool equipment meet state standards uh, as far as pumping capacities and things like that? The turnover rate of the pool, uh, those standards, are, did y'all look into that? And is that being met? We did, yeah. So we looked at uh, several different standards. We looked at you know, sanitation and, and disinfection, which is more on the operational side, you know, do you have one part per million of chlorine within the pool when it is yeah. uh, operating? But we also looked at the turnover uh, rate, and this falls under the pre-1999 uh, pool standard, which would be a turnover rate of eight hours, which uh, it was compliant based on the uh, oh. pump size of the, the pipe and the filtration. Those are important to me because we're yes. running a pool this year and I've got a pool expert that's done an audit. I need to check these 
T's, cross the T's, dot the That's I's. Right. So, <laughs> um, so I, I had some questions you answered them in your presentation. Thank you for that. Um, did you consider our rapid growth? I know you was looking at 4% growth. Um, you know, we've increased about 50% in the last five years. And I'm, I'm anticipating that to uh, occur again. And I was wondering if this pool is going to be big enough for the growth in 10 years. And just making sure you all looked at that. So, Yeah, we did account for that. And we had uh, multiple talks with, with Aaron and his team about that. And so I think that uh, as I was, uh, you know, just looking at the options and the cost, I think that's really why the, you know, a pool in that five and a half to six and a half million dollar range for the total project cost, uh, we feel would not be sized appropriately because of that growth. And so we had to account for that. And so that's why the options got a, a little bit larger in scope uh, due to the, the growth. If, if, if we were to simply repair the existing pool with all the recommendations you made at approximately a million, million and a half dollars, uh, what do you think the expected life of the pool would be after those repairs are made? Yeah, so as I mentioned, we usually see that lifespan of 25 to 30 years for an outdoor pool. You know, if you have that renovation in that uh, 18 to 22 year range, you know, it typically can get another uh, 10, you know, 10 plus years out of the renovation uh, with the caveat that, you know, the ground and the, the pool structure is, is stable. And so, you know, you might want to have an additional assessment done uh, by a structural engineer just to Okay. ensure that the the pool is structurally sound that you know that when you take the plaster off and put new plaster on that it's not just going to crack and delaminate because the pool structure is shifting but typically we find you know an additional 10 years and and getting to 40 years with an outdoor pool uh, is not uh, unheard of and so we could definitely see that you know if you spend that money that you know the pool could be functional for another uh, another decade and a half okay uh, besides being undersized for the amount of kids we're going to have, right? Correct. So our school system is expecting to go from you know, from mm -hmm. seventy seven hundred students to ten thousand students by the end of this decade. So that's a lot of youth that need to be uh, dealt with in our community, and so that's something we need to be looking at. Yeah, and that's the one thing that the existing pool does does not really accommodate well. Just with this old style of pool, you know, you have you have shallow water starting at, at three feet, and then yeah. Uh, deep water, you know, down to 11 or 12 feet. And so that, you know, yeah. child six and under really doesn't have a, a place at this facility. And how big a track of land would you recommend for the largest option that you sized here? So we were looking at about four, four and a half acres okay. in total land. So, and that includes parking efficiencies and okay. all of that. Chris, I think he can make it as big as he wants. Uh, yeah, as long as we have the land, right? We've got land. It's not where he wants it, but we've got <laughs> land. Now, um, we, we are looking at, you know, out in the area that you identified, there's some possibilities there, but um, we just need to know how many acres we need, you know? Sure. So four to five, it sounds like. Correct. Mm -hmm. Last, last question. Um, when you were <coughs> talking to the public, uh, do, do you think this project would be bondable? I mean, the people that you were interacting with, were they supportive of the city spending those, those dollars towards recreation activities? Yeah, I think in general, uh, through the community survey and the public input session that, you know, we heard from uh, a lot of young families, and those are typically the ones that would be, you know, the users of this type of facility. And so uh, I got the impression that there would be support for the facility, specifically within the open-ended comments uh, of the survey. Okay, thank you. Sure. Really appreciate y'all working with us and having those meetings. And, and uh, I know Aaron and his staff have been very involved. And I know that you tried to get as much public involvement as you could. You know, I saw the survey was 200 people. That's pretty good. The uh, Arts Commission had about the same results. So Okay, that's good. <laughs> we're, we're happy to get 200 if we can get them. So right. thank you all so much for all you do for us. All right, Mr. Thank Mayor. You. I had one last question. It's about the budget. You're projecting that it would lose about $100,000 a year. And Aaron, this is probably for you. What is our current pool cost? Loss. 
cost or loss. I don't know what our income, just the whole same, same scenario. Uh, about $50,000 total loss per year. We, uh, we made, uh, so revenue on admissions and concessions um, in 2021 was $31,000. Uh, ex expenses in operations, uh, not counting labor, was about $39,000. Um, labor expense for concessions and guards, about $43,000. Uh, do the math, that's about, about $50,000 loss. So what kind of attendance do we have? Your numbers are like much, much lower than what these projections are. On average, uh, 80 to 9 um, per day. You know, that, that's, everyone's excited when the pool opens. It tends to uh, uh, fade off a little bit longer in the summer. Thank you. Other questions, Council? Yeah. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you, guys. That was an uh, excellent presentation. You set a very high bar. We appreciate it.